Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. In this video, I'll be exploring another building a mock from start to finish. I have done two previously. The first one was a modern small house for a bachelor and the second one was the office of an interior designer. You can check out those videos in the link in the card above or in the description below. Today's build is going to be completely different. It's not going to be a modern building. Subscriber Emel Gifro, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, stated that he preferred the old traditional buildings compared to new modern ones. So today, I'll be building an old building. And the building of choice is an old church. Now, I'm not pushing any religious beliefs. This is the Church of Craggle. After all, this is a Lego universe or Lego world, so it will be the Church of Craggle. I did do some research and I looked for the smallest or tiniest churches in the world. These will be used as my reference point to build my church. It will be a very small church on the 16 by 16 stud base plate. After all, it is designed to be a teaching guide and not so much a full-fledged mock. However, I will be detailing it as I would any mock that I create. And who knows, maybe it will end up in Small Brick City. I've got several parts lined up all ready to go, but I haven't built this before. I'll be building this in real time and we'll see what happens. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to create the layout for the small church. And in my mind, I already know what I'm going to do. It will be a church with a gray base, or at least the foundation of this build will be gray and the rest of the church will be black and white. For the grey components, I've got several bricks over here. I've got lots of these modified bricks. I've got some regular bricks and I've also got these masonry uh, modified bricks. Now the reason I'm using some of these modified bricks, I want to create some texture uh, by putting plates or putting tiles over these bricks. And this is one of the techniques I'll be using in combination with these masonry bricks to create a very textured look for an old traditional building. So let's start off by creating this foundation. And let me mark out the area first. Now my entire build won't take up the entire plate because I do want to leave some breathing space around the build and this will act as grass, which is why I chose the green base plate. I know that the back wall should end up somewhere here. So I'll give at least one stud of an allowance for the back. And for the front, I'll create a two stud allowance and that's so there's a little kind of a front yard or a front porch if you call it uh, I don't know what you call the front part of a church but basically a front garden of sorts that leads into the church there will be a door which I have over here and this door will be four studs wide so that's why I'm leaving this gap over here and this kind of works I think if I build it this way that will work. What I'm going to do is build kind of a tower in front with a pitched roof and then the rest of the church with a sloping roof and that's really like a lot of the small churches I saw when I did the research. This door will be recessed so I'm not going to put it all the way the in front. I think it'll create more texture if I were to recess it a bit somewhat like that. And I also want to create some arches so not everything will be square. I will create some arched windows on either side of the church as I see that's pretty common with these small churches and uh, that's basically it so pretty straightforward I've kind of got the size it's gonna be tiny as I said but now I have to actually work out how I'm going to lay out the foundation with the different bricks that I've chosen so let's just start off in the front because this is the front I obviously want to create texture so let's start off with maybe using these over here. So these are modified bricks, but one by four, and I'll put them in front like that. And for here, since we can't really see it, maybe we can use some regular bricks. I don't have many one by three bricks, but let's just lay down a foundation with a one by three brick like that. You know what, now that I'm looking at it, this would look pretty weird. This actually has to be pushed back more like this. Yeah, that 
that makes more sense i think in my mind because now we can build this way and so this will be that central column so that's that's the right thing to do so this goes here and the modified brick goes here and i can build onwards like that and build the rest of the foundation okay but for the base i do want to put a modified brick here so that I start with that texture look all the way from the bottom. And maybe for the front here, let's, let's do something interesting. Let's not just do regular tiles, but I think it'd be a good opportunity to use some of those ingot parts. Those silver bars, this right over here. And these can texture the front columns of the church tower. And that gives a very ornate design. Because in my mind, I think that these old churches, even though they may be very simple, there's some kind of detail or design that makes them quite artistic in nature. And uh, we think of maybe some kind of artistry or artisan who's actually done some carving or added some detail to the church just to make it more interesting. After all, a church would be considered quite an important building within a small town or village, so particular care can be added to it. Okay, I'm looking for a 1x3 brick which I had, and obviously I can't find it right now, but oh, it's over here, so that goes there. Yep, that will work. And then for the rest of the base, maybe we'll do two levels. So let's add a regular, maybe a one by two over here. And maybe we can get some corner bricks, like a one by three brick. I do favor these one by three bricks because uh, they're very good to lock down the joints of bricks below them to give a very secure build. So this is what we have here. I definitely want to put some of the masonry bricks now to give that texture, but I do not want it to be too symmetrical. So I'm just gonna offset this by one, which means I'll need a regular one by one brick over here. I think when it comes to building an old building, you want to go with asymmetry as opposed to symmetry. So you do not want exact mirror images, especially if you're trying to give a worn outlook. So you want to basically almost have it a bit random, uh, just so that if it's you know being dilapidated or just worn out, it doesn't look exactly like uh, a perfect symmetrical build. So I'm going to add some one by one modified bricks here. And the idea that I'm going for is basically just to create some kind of pattern that I can work with as I build around. I can use some of these uh, regular bricks, but I'm going to use them as sparingly as possible. I do have these. These are two by two bricks, or modified bricks with studs on the side or four studs on the side. So this will allow me to play around with the various heights again, just to give that asymmetry. You can see what I mean over here, uh, they are different heights. But if I were to put a plate here underneath or a towel over this, I will need to take this plate and put it underneath to raise it up over the base plate. Yeah, and that's still a bit uh, off in line. You can see these front studs of the modified bricks, they're not in line, which is good. That's exactly what I want. And let's use a regular brick here and that that will work. Now let's come over this side. Again, I don't want symmetry. So let me put maybe another modified brick here and that can go here and I can do this here. And let's use another one of these. And uh, we do have more modified bricks. And that's basically what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna now try to build up two rows of height for this particular foundation of the church. So this is what I've come up with so far. Basically, a very random look at a foundation for the church. And later I'll be covering these exposed studs with tiles of different sizes, just to give that look of kind of like brick, uh, maybe being added back, or maybe it could look like uh, bricks falling off. Basically just to give a very uh, dilapidated and worn out look. Okay, so I'm happy with this for now. 
There might be changes that we'll have to do later on, but I'll worry about that later. What I need to do now is to build this up and I will be using white, but I will be placing windows and the windows I've chosen are these pieces over here. So they have a curved top just like that and that fits the church and I'm going to figure out where I'm going to space them on the build. So let's look for another window. That basically would be right. It's even two studs on each side and in the middle. So that's very symmetrical. So that's good. I will make the windows higher. They won't be so low. So I'll put at least one or two uh, bricks, white bricks that is, and we'll see how that goes. So we're going to use regular bricks here. Although I am going to also try to put in several of these modified bricks at the same time and maybe some headlight bricks as well. So the difference between the regular modified bricks and the headlight bricks are that the headlight bricks are recessed by just a bit. And that again creates a different level of texture which can add to the visual dimension or texture of the build. So let's try to do a bit and then we'll see what happens. So let's start off from this side here. So this front is still going to remain grey, although this part here will be white. So the grey will look like col columns, so I should build that up first. So I'm doing something like this and alternating between the modified bricks and regular bricks because what I'm trying to do, and I'm not sure if it will look right, but let's see if that works. If I were to put this here, That, that I believe might work to look like some kind of an ornate front. I don't think it's supposed to be real silver, it's just, uh, we'll take it as stone carvings. My original plan was just to put regular tiles, but I think this gives a bit more of a three-dimensional look. And I could also just, you know, decant them slightly to give a more rundown look later on. And that looks good. I, I can see it just from this. This looks like it's a bit shabby. So I think that works in my favor. But right now I'm going to build at least one layer of this white brick. So now I've built up one layer of white bricks, I guess, on the foundation. Uh, I haven't added any of the modified bricks to make it look a bit dilapidated so maybe I should do that now and I'm just gonna look for areas that I can randomly slot them in I don't want to overdo it as well because I don't want it to look too dilapidated uh, the base being dilapidated I think it's fine it looks like the foundation which is maybe giving way to the just the natural erosion or weathering of time uh, and maybe something behind here just to break it up. Although maybe I'll do it later because right now I've chosen these particular white bricks to lock in this layer of grey bricks. So let's, let's just keep this uh, for now. I think that's good enough for now. But what I can do now is see if the placement of the windows are at the right height. So what I'm looking for is not to make it too low and not to make it too high. I know, I'm just looking at just right. Uh, because this is the door, so my roof would probably be somewhere here. So I think that's about right. So let's go with this height first. And if it's really too low, I can always change it about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a mirror image here. And now I want to build around it. So what I need actually for the top and of course, I've thought about this. The top has to use these arch pieces here so that they would go on like that, which means, of course, I need to build under it so that these pieces can go on. And to do that, I basically just need uh, different bricks uh, just to match up to this height. And let's do that now. So I'm thinking of doing something here just to make it more interesting. I'm thinking of making some kind of a hole or something uh, maybe I could do a breakaway wall. Again, I'm thinking of a play feature. Anytime I do a build, I'm thinking, what sort of story could I create and how could I incorporate the story into the build? And can we put any play feature into the build? Meaning, 
can we have something that happens just so that it looks more interesting rather than just a solid building? So I'm thinking maybe either a broken wall so that it's open or maybe a wall that can break apart. Let's let's start off with a, a broken wall first. I think it will just be interesting to have a small hole here. So I'm going to break this apart and I'm going to see how I can create some kind of small hole. So this is what I've got so far. I've built up these uh, windows, I've got a little hole at the back. And I think what I want to do is just add in some of these modified bricks so that I can make it a bit worn out over here. But that's basically the idea. So let's finish up this row here and maybe create some kind of a archway for this door. For the archway for the door, I will be using a piece like that. So that would probably go somewhere like this. So then I would build upon this so you at least get a look of an archway. And then the tower would be basically this portion over here that goes up. So let's fill in the space first. So here we have the main structure of the church. I'm not sure if this is too high. Maybe we've gone up by one brick, but I think it's right because that's a doorway. You can't really have it uh, any lower because then it'll block the door. So I think this is the right height for the main part of the building. So what I'm going to do is going to build slopes up for the roof in just a bit. But probably let's work out this tower first. So this is the tower that you see uh, basically in the photos of the small churches that I researched. So if I choose this to be the height uh, or the start of the base of the tower, I'm going to plate this just to make everything secure. However, let's put these ingot decorated pieces first just to see how it goes. Because if you notice, it looks a bit different. Let's see. Yeah, I missed the spot. So. I will have to switch these around and that's so that I get the right even height that I'm looking for and I think this will work out actually quite well at least there's equal continuity on both sides so I have to switch this around as well and then I'll see if I'll place a plate on top and I've got a plate over here so that's uh, this one over here that's a 4x6 plate and that goes in to hold everything in place somewhat like that so I'm gonna place I'm gonna switch this out and I'm gonna place this in and see what happens and that's how it looks with the plate on and this will be the front tower of the church so I'm gonna build this tower first and then we'll see how the height and proportion looks and then we'll add the roof slope the roofs of the main building. So let's change the angle of the camera as we do this. What I intend to do here is to create a bell tower if possible using these large 1x6 arch pieces. So it looks, I guess, something like that. So it should end up about this high, which means that I'm about two bricks off. So I do want to end up with one of these ingot pieces just under here, or maybe even overlapping it a bit. So that means this height will be dependent on how high I can put these ingot pieces. So let's do that first. I think that looks pretty good. I think the height is right. If I were to build a bell, I think the bell shouldn't be that big, but if it hangs down, it needs some clearance here. So I think this is right. I just have to figure out how I'm going to build the rest of this because I will have another piece over here like that uh, and I'm going to see if it's possible to have a 1x2 but there's no 1x2 or 1x2 yeah, arch, it's only a 1x3 so I think we would just have to go straight here and I'm going to see how that looks if I were to arch it this way. The other alternative is to have a 1x four on this side here and a one by three arch over here and that's just so that I have an arch on all four sides and you can see the bell just like a regular I guess a bell tower of this nature so let's try to do that and see what happens 
but basically I also like to add anytime you do a build whether it's an old build or a new build you do want to try to get a sense of uh, balance and proportion for any build you do and that's what I was doing here I was trying to figure out how high this should be in relation to this build and also for the functional use of putting in a bell you do not want it too small because after all this is the highest point of the church but you also don't want it too high a necessary high that it's out of proportion so it's good if you can try to you know try to fine-tune your sense of proportion I think it comes naturally to some people and it doesn't come naturally to some people for me you know in real life I do a lot of design work for theatrical stage props I'm always building stuff uh, and they have to be in proportion because they have to fit people they have to fit the stage so over the years I've honed the sense of proportion and uh, sense of scale so that's something but I think it's very important and that is really translated over to the Lego building for me personally and that's why I find it relatively easy to put things together in terms of relative scale but that's something to note when you're building mocks. So what I've tried to do here was to actually put this arch in between but it really doesn't work just because this is a 1x6 and the Lego math just doesn't work out. So I don't think I can put an arch on this side over here. That will be flat, but I do not think it will be a huge deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another plate and I'm going to lock this into place here. And this will be the base for the pitched roof that would carry on. Now I would love for these ingots to go all the way to the top, but it just isn't possible. Uh, we don't have that kind of parts for it. I will plate or I will tile this here just to give it a smooth look. But I think this is essentially uh, how this part of the tower will look. So now I'm just thinking should I keep this closed or should I keep it open? And I think I would have to continue building just to see how it turns out and then I can make that decision. So what I'm going to do now is to build this roof over here and I'm going to use different sloped bricks in black and I'm going to create a pitch roof top and we'll see what happens. And here I have the roof done. I think that looks quite like the front steeple of the tower of a church. So I still haven't decided whether I should fill in this gap here and I think it really depends now on the roof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build this roof here. So I need to build some kind of a pitch roof and build it up this way and I'm going to use different parts over here and I'll need to also build it modular style so I do want to be able to lift it off so that's what I'm going to solve now I think the first thing I'm going to do is a layer of black slope bricks around just to act as the foundation of the roof and then I'll see if I can add tiles uh, so that I can make it modular style for the rest of the roof so let's add that base of slope bricks first so here's the base layer of the roof. I've added in white bricks behind to fill in the space, but basically these are the sides of the pitch roof and I have kind of created an overhang of one stud at each side uh, because I think the overhang is important. So what I'm gonna do now is to towel this part over here and to add some jumper plates to create that uh, basically that basic uh, base for a modular roof. So what I've done here is I've added tiles to the top and I've put one by one studs and that's act, those who act as jumper plates so that if I have a roof I can actually put it on top and I can remove it easily so that we can access the interior of the church. So what I have to do now is to figure out how to build this pitch roof as one unit and I'll again I'll be using these roof bricks or the slope bricks and I have to create some kind of structure. So I'll definitely need to use some boning or base plates such as these one by one or one by something long plates or two by something long plates and even this four by six plate to create some kind of a structure so that the slope bricks hold together. Because as you can imagine, these will be stacked on top of each other like that. So anytime you build a slope roof, you need some kind of structure underneath, whether it's bricks on the side or plates underneath to hold everything together so that you can handle them as one unit. If not, you can see it's very easy and very brittle to just 
come apart like that. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now, because there's the tower of the church here at the front, I would need to create an indent for the roof or at least have this part of the roof go in by one stud. And that's why I needed these one by three slope bricks as well on either side, just to be able to create that instep so that everything would fit close together just like that. So here's the progress of the roof. So what I've done is I've one by something long plates on the exterior underneath the edges of the roof and I've braced the second layer of the roof with these two by something plates. So it's relatively stable. What I will need to do is add a brick here and we can cover everything with this plate. Maybe we can do it this way because it's longer than eight studs. So I will need to have another one by four plate here. And I chose to put the one by four plate here because there seems to be less support. Although maybe I can put in a brick here, which I have to see in just a bit. But now I've got a relatively strong roof. You can see it can be handled as one piece and this can fit over everything just like that. Well, it should fit in. Let's, let's fit that in. And that should rest onto the studs as well. Yeah. Okay, there's some empty gaps. So I'll need one by two plates here. And I probably can fill in the space there so I can put in maybe a brick in the middle there. But I think it's coming along. It does look a bit church-like to me. What do you think so far? I think it's coming along. I still haven't decided what I should do here, I, but I'm leaning towards filling the space up. But let's finish the roof first and then let's make a final decision for this part over here. So I've completed the roof. I've filled up the front over here so that we don't see the hollow of the inside of the church and also so that rain doesn't get in. So if I cover this here, we should have a very solid looking roof and everything is covered from all angles even though uh, we can see it through this tower over here now notice because of this tower you can't put a sloped brick over here so we are going to fill in that space so that it's not an exposed stud and we can use a cheese wedge piece like that and by doing this we give some continuity to the roof as well. So that looks pretty good and it looks uh, nice and finished and it feels that the roof is being built around the tower as intended. Okay, so now let's make a decision for this. Well, it depends what I have. I have these bricks that would fit pretty nicely, but these are all the bricks I have. So I can't put everything here. So maybe I could use a combination of the modified bricks uh, and these are this as in these modified stud bricks and these modified masonry bricks or I can fill it with white so decisions uh, let's go with the gray I think the gray kind of works you know there's kind of a symmetry between the base and the sides over here and uh, I just need to be able to figure out so I've got five of these so I need to space them out with these modified bricks. And maybe I could throw in a regular one by two brick as well. So let's do that. So here I've filled up the space. I won't press this on right now, but just to put this here, I think that works. I, I think we could have gone either way with white or gray. So I think it makes uh, not much a big difference. This could also look like it was originally white and it's now paint has peeled off or something. And once we add in tiles here, I think it goes with that whole worn out look. So I think this is fine. Now what I want to do now is to actually add a bell and the bell has to be attached to the underside of this roof. And uh, let's, let's put the bell together first. And I think it's going to be pretty simple to do. We just need kind of grey parts. I do have this bell shaped like cover and I have this dish. I didn't have it in dark grey but I, th I think this works at least especially with this old build as well. 
and I have a bar element with a stud with a hole. And if I thread everything through like this, that pretty much looks like some kind of a bell. And now I have to see if I can just attach it here. Now I probably want it to hang lower, so I'll need to think of a way to attach it like that. So if I do this, let's do something like that. The thing is, it doesn't hang low enough. It's a bit too high. So I need to think of a way to drop it, but still have some kind of stability. So I guess we will put probably not a bar element. I could use a longer bar element and attach it to the stud. So I could change this out to the five stud long bar element and then I'll attach that to this round stud and put that underneath and we'll see how that works out. So this is the five stud long bar. I need to figure out how I'm going to put this in. Maybe I could do it this way and this goes in here and this round stud with the hole goes over all the way, uh, not all the way down actually, it has to be up like that. I'm not sure if this is too low now, because if we attach this here, and let's see how that looks. Okay, that's too low. So now I need uh, to get a shorter bar element. Or, yeah, maybe let's look for a shorter bar element first. This is the antenna bar element and it is shorter by at least one brick. So let's see how that goes. In this case, this would, I guess, go in this way. This will go on top and we'll take the stud with the hole. I think that that feels about right. And this, if we attach underneath like that, I think that hangs about just right because if we have that arch brick piece in front it will really cover the bar element uh, so let's put that back together so i've put the bell inside but notice the exposed brick there on the inside uh, that should be covered just like i'm covering the front here but you know what I think having the exposed brick behind is fine. It gives it a little bit of an unfinished look. Uh, so I'm going to leave it. I, I, won't, I won't cover it with a towel. But I will put all these silver ingot parts back. So that completes more or less the look for the front. I think that looks definitely like a church. No one's going to mistake it not for a church. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, there are a few things I do want to add uh, before we get to the interior. And we're going to cover up all these with different towel pieces uh, so that there are no exposed studs. I am going to leave the top part of the roof here uh, unfinished because I think this gives a bit of a rough look because everything is so smooth. We do not want it too perfect. After all, this is an old church. And I'm also going to add in some lamps over here for the front of the church in these modified bricks. So let's do that and we would complete probably about 90% of the exterior of this church. So here we have the lamps made from these dish pieces as well as these uh, transparent heads and black studs and to attach the lamps to the modified bricks for the front of the church i will use these tap elements and these basically hang down like that or maybe we have to do it this way because it's a bit longer yep that kind of works a bit looks a bit low but i think it's i think it's fine we'll use a minifig uh, to judge the scale in just a bit but i think this will work this 
I think that's a nice proportion. It's kind of in the middle between the roof and this uh, gray foundation as well. And that's come along pretty well. Let's see if we can push this up just a bit. I think that works okay. Now that I look at it this way, I think that this bell is hanging too low still. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to change the bar. And I think uh, we would have finished this. I'm going to add something here before I do that. And uh, the reason I wanted to have a hole is just to have some kind of features, as I said, and we can use this kind of a wooden plank to as though cover the hole for the church. Not that it... Uh, prevents any rats from getting in or anything, but I think that's a nice little touch. So let's see what we can do about this bell to raise it up, uh, but not too much that this will be covered, the top of the bell will be covered by this arch piece. So let's do that now. I didn't have a grey bar in this length, uh, so I'm going to use a black one. And let's see how that works out. So let's dismantle this and we will place it through just like that hold this into place and i think i think we have a winner this time and that looks much better yep this proportion is much better the belt looks like it can ring where it is and overall i think uh, the proportion of the church is right uh, the size is right and i think we can stop here for part one of this video series I hope you enjoyed part one of creating an old Lego building from start to finish. And I think this old church has turned out really well. It looks really close to the images that I saw of tiny churches from around the world. The color scheme of the light gray, white and black work in my opinion. And uh, all these elements and techniques used to create an old one out look, I think work. It's not overdone, yet you do get the sense there's this worn out old church feel. In the next episode, we will detail the outside, the interior, and maybe we'll also explore how to create a story with a build because I've got something in mind for this old church. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications and look out for part two. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.